What is up Stack and Ohana? This is Aloha Stacker and welcome back to the channel and another video. And in today's video we have History Mondays and we're going to do the history of the 50 gold peso centenario and the Mexican War of Independence. I figured it was a good time. Cinco de Mayo just passed us, so why not do that? But before we get there, let's go ahead and take a look at some channel mail. I got a piece of channel mail from the island of Australia. And I bet you can't guess who this is from. Well, let's go ahead and open up and find out. I had to take off all the names to protect the addresses. But let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. And he sent it in this beautiful little cardboard protector. I wonder why, I don't know, but we're gonna find out, shall we? Okay, so what do we got here? We got a nice note that says, oop, says, I'll just read it. Good day, Aloha. Thanks for doing a sticker trade with me. I enjoy your awesome channel. You are the Libertad King. Your collection is stunning. I have learned a lot of history from watching your videos. Keep up the awesome work. Your friend from down under. Coinspot, David. Oh, it is from our friend at Coinspot. And he had sent me a soiree of stickers. Take a look at this. We've got Coinspot, silver stacking. Nope, number, th number three. We've got another Coinspot, silver stacking. Number four. We have got uh, silver coins, collectibles with David, plus more. This is number eight. We've got uh, coin spot silver stack. Now that is a cool sticker. Take a look at that. That is really cool. Eight of sixty. We got coin spot silver stacking. Man, man, David, you have got some serious stickerage. <laughs> and then we got uh, the last coin spot sticker, the one that logo from the channel. I'll put a link to his description to his channel in the description. So please take a look at David from Coin Spot. He does. He's got some really cool coins from all over the world, but he really focuses on Thailand currency and coins and Australia. So take a look at that when you get a chance. All right, let's get this all out of the way and let's move on to the next. Oh, and he also sent this. So what do we got here? Looks like he sent a coin. So let's see what we've got. And this says 1952, one shilling, 50% silver, mintage 19,649,000. Well, thanks for putting the mintage. That makes it easier so I don't have to look it up. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom now. Boom, all right. So here's the coin right here. We got George the fifth on it. Or George VI, I'm sorry. And then uh, let's flip it. We've got an Australia shilling with a ram on it. Shilling 1952. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you so much, Coinspot and David. I really appreciate it. This is an awesome piece of uh, foreign coinage to add to the collection. 50% silver. I cannot complain. I love my silver. And you knew that. So thank you very much, my friend. I really appreciate it. Very cool. So let's go ahead and keep that in. Let's keep that. Actually, I like this side. You know what? I like this side better. So let's put it right there. Good. Perfect. Boom. Okay. So what do we got here today for you, everybody? Looks like we've got some 50 peso centenarios. Let's go ahead and pick one up and so you can take a look at it. So this is a Mexican 50 peso coin. That's 1.0256 ounces of gold, 37.5 grams of pure gold. This is a 1947. So this is the restruck one. And we'll get into that a little bit later. We got the obverse of the Mexican emblem at the time. And we've got the winged liberty on the front. You know, my favorite, the same one that's on the Libertad, just in a different uh, view this time of year. So I also busted out this right here, which is the uh, the first of the Libertads, uh, gold Libertads from 1981, which also used the same image. Now, the emblem is different on the back, a uh, more recent version of the Mexican emblem, but uh, very beautiful. So I wanted to have all that shown off for the thing. So let's go ahead and talk about the coin a little bit. So I've got, so I've got the reverse and obverse all sitting here. So the history of the 50 gold peso centenario. Also known as a centenario de oro, the Mexican 50 peso was first introduced in 1921 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Mexico's War of Independence. The Mexico 50 peso is the most noted for being one of the world's first bullion gold coins. Not until the introduction of the South African Krugerrand in 1967 were any other pure gold coins being produced in large quantities. Today, they are a favorite of accumulators of gold due to their low premium over spot and their universal ease of liquidation. The obverse design was inspired by the image of Nike, the winged Roman god of victory. The coin actually depicts the iconic El Angel de la Independencia, or the Angel of Independence. In her right hand, she holds a laurel leaf, and in her left, a broken chain. Let's go ahead and put that up so you can see up closer. Laurel leaf, broken chain. Behind her are the Popocatapetl and the Izca Situatol, the famous volcanoes of Mexico. Apologize for the pronunciations, those are very hard to pronounce. On each side of the winged angel are the dates 1821, the year in which Mexico gained its independence from Spain, and 1947, the year in which the 50 pesos were stopped minted. The reverse depicts a picture of the angel perched upon, or the eagle perched on a cactus feeding on a snake, symbolizing 
Mexico's call to arms. Surrounding this depiction are the words Estados Unidos Mexicanos, which translates into United Mexican States. Each Mexican 50 peso contains 1.2057 ounces of gold. In comparison to other coins, the Mexican 50 peso is much larger with a diameter of 37.08 millimeters and a thickness of 2.69 millimeters. So that, my friends, is the Mexican gold 50 peso. Now these have a total mintage after 1947, since all the three that I have here are 1947s, uh, that means that there's a mintage total of 3.97 million of these coins were actually minted and they were considered, I guess, I guess you could consider them kind of like restrikes. So they're all 19, so if you have a different year here, it'll have a different mintage, but those mintages were much lower and those coins tend to hold a higher premium and value because they were minted, uh, they were not the restriked ones. So, and then we have here, you know, the first Mexican Libertad from 1981. This only had a mintage of 596,000, but this image you can see is just the same image as what we have here. So I wanted to show that off since I love this coin so much. And then, you know, the silver one has the same images. So let's talk about the Mexican War of Independence. So the Mexican War of Independence ran from 1810 to 1821, was a war between the people of Mexico and the Spanish colonial government. It started on 16 September 1810, since Mexican-born Spaniards, Criollo people, Mestizos, and Amer Indians wanted their independence from Spain. The idea of Mexican independence went back to the years after the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire. Martin Cortez led a revolt against the Spanish government. After the conspiracy of the Machates failed in 1799, the War of Independence really started with the Grito de Dolores in 1810. Spain was busy fighting for its independence against the invading First French Empire during the Peninsular War, and most of Latin America revolted. Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla was a Mexican priest and a member of the group educated Criollo, Criollos in Caritado. They met in salons, or tertulias, and decided in 1810 that a revolt against the colonial government was needed because Napoleon I had replaced the King of Spain with a French foreigner. Hidalgo worked closely with Ignacio de Allende, a nobleman with military training, for a battle in December 1810. They were betrayed by a member of the group. Hidalgo turned to his partitioners in the town of Dolores. Around 6 a.m. on September 16, 1810, he declared independence from the Spanish crown and war against the government in what is known as the Grito de Dolores. The Revolutionary Army decided to fight for independence and marched on Guanajuato, which was a major colonial mining center which was governed by Spaniards and Criollos. Their leader, they are the leaders of the citizen army, which was poorly organized, locked themselves in a granary and killed most of the Spaniards and Criollos who, who were there. That included high-ranking nobles and supporters of the fight for independence, which caused Hidalgo and Allende to fight with each other. Allende no longer wanted to fight alongside Hidalgo and left with his soldiers. On October 30th, Hidalgo's army fought the Spanish resistance at the Battle of Monte de las Cruces and won. In January 1811, Spanish forces fought the Battle of the Bridge of Calderon and won. That made rebels flee toward the United States-Mexican border where they hoped to escape, but they were caught by the Spanish army. Hidalgo and what was left of his army were caught in the state of Coahuila at the wells of Bahan. He had a trial done by the Spanish Inquisition on July 30th, 1811 and was executed. After Hidalgo's death a, of Father Hidalgo, the, the leadership of the revolutionary was taken over by Jose Maria Morelos. Morelos. Under his leadership, the cities of Osaka and Acapulco were taken. In 1813, the Congress of Chilpancingo had its first meeting. On November 6, the Congress signed the first official document of independence known as the Solemn Act of Declaration of Independence of Northern America. A long war followed at the Siege of Cuautla. In 1815, Morelos, Morelos was caught by the Spanish colonial authorities. He was put on trial and executed for treason in San Cristobal, Ecatepec, on December 22nd. By the early 1820s, the independence movement was close to collapsing. Two of its main leaders had been executed and the rebels could not easily fight a well-organized Spanish military. Also, many of the influential Criollos did not care anymore. The violence of the unorganized army of Hidalgo and Morelos was not, was not light. The Mexicans wanted a better and less bloody way to get their independence. In December 1820, Viceroy Juan Ruiz de Apodaca sent a force led by a royalist Criollo officer, Colonel Agustin de Iturbide, in, to fight in Osaka. Iturbide was famous for the way in which he went after the rebels during the early independence struggle. The fight at Osaka came at the same time as successful military coup in Spain against the monarchy of Ferdinand VII. Ferdinand was forced to reinstate the liberal Spanish constitution of 1812. When that news reached Mexico, Iturbide saw it as an opportunity for the Criollos to gain control of Mexico. After clashing with Guerrero's forces, 
Iturbide switched sides. He invited the rebel leader to meet and discuss a new independent struggle. In the town of Iguala, Itur Itur Iturbide created three rules of guarantees for Mexican independence from Spain. Mexico would be an independent kingdom that would be ruled by King Ferdinand, another Bourbon prince, or some other conservative European prince. A Criollo ruler could be appointed by the Mexican Congress if no European would take the position. Criollos and Peninsulares would, be, would now have equal rights and privileges. The Roman Catholic Church would keep its privileges and would be the only religion allowed. He made his troops accept these rules, which were known as the Plan of Iguala. Iturbide then persuaded Guerrero to join his forces in support of the new independence. A new army, the Army of the Three Guarantees, was placed under Iturbide's command to enforce the plan. It was so broad that it pleased both patriots and loyalists. The goal of independence and the protection of the Roman Catholicism brought together all factions. Iturbide's army was joined by rebel forces from all over Mexico. When the rebels' victory became certain, the viceroy, the viceroy resigned. On August 24, 1821, representatives of the Spanish crown and Iturbide signed the Treaty of Córdoba, which recognized Mexican independence under the terms of the Plan of Uguala. On September 27th, the army of the Three Guarantees entered Mexico City. The next day, Iturbide proclaimed the independence of the Mexican Empire. On the night of May 18, 1822, a mass of people marched through the streets. They demanded for Iturbide to accept the throne. The next day, Congress declared Iturbide Emperor of Mexico, or Mexico. So that is the history. But now I want to show you something that's really cool that also celebrates this, and it comes in this really cool box. And this is a coin that was manufactured by the gold, I think it was the gold and silver reserve. So check it out, it comes in this really nice case. I don't know if you guys know what this is going to be, but oh, looks like we have a certificate of authenticity. So certificate of authenticity, now, what do we have here? This is a 1921 Mexico 50 pesos coin, 100th anniversary, 1921 to 2021. Specifications, year, weight two troy ounces of three nines fine silver with a diameter of 39 millimeters with only a mintage of 250 by the GR reserve. So let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and set this here. Actually, you know what, we'll put this side on so you can see the details. Now let's look at the coin itself. Now it is a beautiful replica. This is two ounces of silver, 62.2 grams of plata pura, or pure silver. 100 year anniversary, 1921 to 2021, made identically to the way the coins looked, almost, almost. So we have the reverse here. So you can see that it's very similar, except there's some little GSR right there for the manufacturer. Now these were made by the Intaglio Mint from the research I was able to do. And if you take a look, here are the coins side by side. So you can see in all their beauty, they are almost identical, pretty much to a T. So pretty cool, except for the years being different, they are absolutely beautiful. Now this silver coin also has some side lettering where it shows, see it's got a little, it's got uh, 200, this is number 229 of 250. So there are only 250 of these minted and these are absolutely stunning silver coins. So anybody who is a collector of Libertads and Pesos and loves these types of coins, I mean, this, this is a must have, it had to be, it was for me. And you know me, I love my Libertads and I love my Mexican gold and silver coins. So this is definitely a new pride and joy of my collection. I'm so glad to be able to have a, uh, one of these and I was able to get this off of an Instagram seller. So thank you very much, my friend. Uh, you know who you are who sold this to me. So thank you very much. I know it's a little costly coin. I didn't even know it came out. I saw it later uh, and I saw other uh, people on eBay and YouTube or not eBay, uh, Instagram and YouTube showing these off and I know I had to get one. So this is a stunning coin, absolute beauty. It's beautiful to put it next to, here's the stupid authenticity. It's absolutely beautiful to put next to its gold version uh, so very beautiful actually you know what let's take a gold one out you know why because there is edge lettering on these coins so it would be really nice for me to be able to show you how that looks on you know, one of these coins because they are just, it's just it's just worth showing it's just totally worth showing so here's one of the gold ones outside the case absolutely stunning and beautiful but look at the edge lettering i love the edge lettering on these mexican coins independencia y libertad it says on the edge lettering and these things are just oh man they're just so dense and heavy oh gosh you just Enjoy, just love being able to touch some gold. <laughs> uh, this one is going to stay in the case, though, because this one has some value to it. This is a numismatic piece and a collector piece, and it's definitely never coming out of this any time that it has to. So, but look at the look at the thickness difference. This because this is two ounces of pure silver, so absolutely stunning, beautiful coins. Uh, let's take a look at it compared. Does, now, does the one ounce Libertad? I'm not 100 percent sure if this edge lettering on this one. I bet you there is though, because this is an early Libertad, so it probably has similar edge lettering. Take a look. So here's the one ounce Libertad, and it also has the Independencia Libertad written on the edge lettering, so beautiful coin. What's crazy is this is one ounce, and this is 1.2056 ounces, and look at the size difference of the coin, see, look at that. 
and you get a C, and then the density and the thickness, they're very similar, but beautiful coins. I, get to, I really get to enjoy uh, holding these gold, and the two different emblems, absolutely beautiful. So that is my History Monday for you, everybody. Now, due to my schedule, uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to come out with another video, uh, but I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll make them as I can. And uh, thank you all for so much for all your uh, friendship and support and standing by me during uh, my move. So uh, thank you very much, and I will see you guys when I see you guys. So with that, I want to say aloha and mahalo.